Last week, I was at the Business of Science Conference, which took place in Birmingham. It's a partnership with the University of Salford, and we're really proud to be there. Part of the discussions that took place during the day were around STEM education. Now, you cannot work in a university without having heard about STEM in a variety of capacities over your career. And I've heard about it a lot, not least because a lot of the science communication work that I do connects in with STEM priorities. In fact, some of the history around science communication is embedded into STEM aspirations, essentially getting more young people into science, technology, engineering and mathematics. Now, I asked a question about this in the session that was focused on STEM and talked about STEAM. Now, for a few years, there have been quite a lot of people that think we need to pivot from STEM to STEAM, which is where we bring in the arts into the equation, really, where we think about the skills needed for the future. So STEAM, science, technology, engineering, arts, and mathematics is how many, I would say, progressive approaches to STEM have emerged over the last few years. And this is still quite a big chunk of work to get across to people, that we need the arts, we need creativity, we need cultural industries to be central to the construction of STEM for the, for the 21st century. And yet it's also important to recognise that some of those biggest innovative areas where we're working in STEM subjects are intimately connected to the arts. So you think of, for example, the artificially intelligent news reporter from Korea that was launched a couple of years ago. And you can't realise these things without the creative artistic uh, context and, and, and influence and expertise that, that creates the realisation of the avatar, the near future, near realistic avatar that is then part of the broadcast. So we need the, you cannot have a Netflix that's driven by AI without content to put on it. So uh, and examples like the uh, uh, Bandersnatch from a, few, a couple of years ago, where we see the immersive, interactive televisual experiences emerge are all connected to these worlds. So I urge people to think about STEAM rather than STEM and design curricula, design structures for engaging young people through this principle. However, there's also another iteration of this idea which moves into what's called MESH programs. So this is media literacy, ethics, sociology and history and many would argue that we need to nurture these skills amongst our younger generation to ensure that they're fit for the future so it's the closer you get to research to knowledge you realize how important all these connections are and that we can't just focus on stem without thinking about mesh learning but certainly engaging with the body of work that brings these areas together that creates critical thinkers through engaging people with the ideologies that surround many technological uh, programs i heard on the radio just today that the ai the uk's ai program is falling behind including the us as well and it's partly because the argument was that the eth- the way in which China and, and aspects of the East approach ethics is actually to elevate collective good over individual good. Whereas in the West, we tend to think about individual autonomy as underpinning ethical uh, consent. So the argument was that the UK, the West is going to fall behind because its ideological setting is very different from the east and we need to worry about this because the east will get much further ahead in terms of ai and a whole range of other technological programs the consequence of that the outcome for the speaker on the radio this morning was that we can't do anything about this we just have to give up on individual ethical consent and accept the fact that ai can only flourish in a communitarian context where we give up some of our rights Not sure about that, though. Don't think that's quite right. I think we can advance both these things together. But in order to do so, we need to build literacy in sort of media ethics, in history and sociology to make sure that we understand the implications of what we're doing. And it's that thought that I'll leave you with today.